All right. Today I'm going to show to you how to evaluate the pore space accessibility in a scaffold using Dragonfly. So a scaffold is basically a, a supportive material for bone growth. And because it is uh, implanted or it's, it's inserted in the patient, what well, has it has to be uh, it has to allow the cells to be to access any any space inside it so that it, the, the new bone can grow inside. So uh, this scaffold was scanned in a micro CT system, scanned at uh, eight micrometers per voxel, and I just resampled it to 16 just to make it easier and fast to, to present and show it to you here. So that's just a crop region and it was resampled. So uh, basically what we're going to do is first we're going to segment the sample. So I'm going this is quite simple to do. So we're going to do the to go to the segment tab, define range and upper OTSU for the structure. I'm going to add to new and I'm calling it structure. And, um, and I can use the lower for the pore space. Let's call it pores. Okay, we've got the pore space and we've got the structure. So the first thing I'm going to check is if there is any pore that is inaccessible, any closed pore. If there is a closed pore, it will definitely not be accessible to any cell or any other like medium. So in this case, we can't really tell by looking at, uh, at the slices because we have to consider a 3D object. So this one is closed for the 2D, but it's open somewhere like here. So what I can do in Dragonfly, one of the ways to do it is I can duplicate it just for now. So I've got the two here and I can take the second one here that I duplicated and I can go to operations on the segment tab and fill in the areas. If I do it in the 3D, I'm going to fill out any pore space that is totally closed. So I'm going to apply. And now what I want to do is to compare this one to this one. And if I want to compare, I can first come here and compare the copied one that was the field one. I can just rename it just for now. Oops, field. And compare to this one. If I refresh, it says 100%. That, that could mean, okay, there was no closed pore. That's good, so I don't need to worry about those. But if you have a look here, when I click in the field ones in the volume and I click in the non-field ones, they are slightly different. That's because the volume that the volume comparison that is shown here just use integer number. It doesn't use any decimal place. So if you want to have the real number, the real figure, what you have to do is, let me just get some prepared here. So I can uh, open a notepad and I can come here and uh, in the field one that is probably slightly bigger because I filled the point space. I copy using this button here and I can paste here. And I can do the same for the other one. Copy and paste. What I want to do is, let me get the calculator. I want to just compare these numbers. So control C, control V divided by the second one. So it says it's very small. So it's much less than 0.1%. So that is negligible. I'm not going to consider that. If there was any, so we sh we would have to make a relation or just get them by clicking both of them and get the intersect. 
and I would I would have only those that were closed and that would be could be used in the end because we don't have any here so I'm going to delete this out I don't need that and now I'm going to work on the pore space because that's that's where I'm going to check if my uh, my cells will be able to access any point of this structure so what I can do here is actually I can right click in the pore space create ma create mapping of volume thickness map so that will give me a, a, a map of each single voxel in my data set and will give me actually I can show you this information here so if you go to in dragonfly if you go to help and in the first option here you got dragonfly help and that will pop up like this and then you can search for volume thickness in this case and here we have the information and the volume thickness is actually it's computed by using the local thickness for each point in the region of interest and that is based on the sphere fitting method if you're not familiar with that it's also known as local thickness you can have a look on the publication that was from 1997 from Hildebrand and that will uh, show how it's done but basically what it does is it takes each individual voxel in your image and grows a virtual or imaginary sphere and when it reaches two points on the sides of the sphere that it can't grow anymore it will get that diameter of that sphere and that will be one of the points so as it's easier to understand if I just show it here so this is the map the thickness map you can see that it's black where it's zero there's no distance though so we can't calculate anything here and it grows from zero to in this case 1118 that's the maximum that was found here and let's make it more a bit nicer to visualize let's get some colors so now it's easy to see where the sphere that was grown inside each point could fit inside this pore space so here you see that in this red one it's quite I could grow the software could grow quite a large sphere until it reached the the borders or actually the scaffold in this case because we are working on the pore space and in some regions you can't it couldn't grow that much like this one here is very very dark like blue so the dark blue is zero so it's close to 100 or 150 and if you go like this you see that it's still like very very small spheres that were fitting in there but why would it help me understand or evaluate the space the accessibility of those pore space so what I can do here is this is a I can I can click here and if I go to segment again and I go to define region I can define a range to which I want to segment from that volume thickness if I want to segment let's say from 0 to 300 I will I will see I think it's better just to go like this you see if I if I grow here from like 300 400 you look at the image and you see that it's getting more and more of those spheres that were fitting there so the larger spheres are getting getting more included and when I'm including them it means those sphere if I stop here let's make an example with 300 here if I stop here and uh, I'm not going to include the zero because I don't want the scaffold I'm going to add to new so in inaccessible for larger than 300 so that is giving me the region let me get the scaffold here to show okay not nice color 
very strong ones. So now I can see regions where with a size of 300 micrometers, nothing can access. So if I get like a very big chubby cell with 300 micrometers in diameter, it wouldn't be able to get to this region here. It wouldn't be able to get to this region here. So that is what what, I, what I'm showing here. So I can you can have an evaluation of how accessible those pore spaces are to a certain size of a sphere. So in this case here, we're just getting 300. We could just get another example. Like let's make this visible again. Go back there. Select the pore, the volume thickness range again and let's make from 1 to 500 let's make it larger okay now we've got oops still showing here okay now the regions that are not accessible to 500. In case you need to uh, calculate something, you can just click here and compare to the whole pore space, for example. Uh, if I go here and I compare to pores and refresh, uh, it's actually the opposite. The pores you have to compare to 500. So 22% is non-accessible, it's inaccessible when I have a threshold of 500 micrometers. So any, anything bigger than 500, be it a cell or whatever you want to put inside that has a diameter of greater than 500, will not access 22% of your volume. And when it comes to this one here, so actually what we can do is click on the pore space and then compare to the 300. Oops, refresh. And that's only 3%. And let me show this. So that's quite a difference. And again, if you need the, the numbers, you just copy here. And another thing is if you need to have uh, let, let me just before that let me just show this one in the 3d so this is how it looks okay this is the non-accessible pore space for anything greater than 500 And going back here, if if we need if we need the accessible ones, so what we can do is actually just do the opposite. Knowing that we can just go and define range. Uh oh, wrong here. That's here. So instead of like this, we define 500 to the maximum one one. One eight, and then so this is going to be accessible to in this case smaller than 500 micrometers, and we take this out. So this and take this out. So these are the accessible regions inside your pore space where anything smaller than 500 can go. And just for illustration purposes, I'm going to click here and just get this sphere here. And let's, this is 500, so let's get more or less 500. Can't really get 500, but 505. So if that is my imaginary cell, it could access all these like dark areas. And here it doesn't look like it could, but if you, Imagine that this is a 3D, 
So this in the center of the sphere is what counts. So that would fit exactly here before it touches the sides of the structure. And here you wouldn't be able to fit. You can see it doesn't fit anywhere here. So we really have a way. That's the way we have to in Dragonfly to calculate how accessible the pores are, the pore space is to a certain threshold, a certain threshold of uh, diameter of a, a cell or, or a structure. And if you want to quantify it, it's just like you can quantify based on the volume, just getting the information here. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you.